Rio Mona by Star What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode I somewhere in <laughs> early twenties. I don't even know. Um, I'm back. Javi got fired or demoted. He's right in the back behind the camera. Um, it's nice to be back. We got a new set. We got some awesome people. Um, professional button presser DJ Mona. Start five star Mona. Yes, DJ five star Mona. How was the drive over here? It was not that bad. I would say it was definitely the end of traffic hour. Houston traffic is fucking terrible, but not that bad, like 36 minutes. But we we are in the middle of nowhere, so I will tell y'all that. We're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in um, Humble, Texas. No, everybody says that. Everybody no, says that. Humble's like farm, like... We're hearing the frogs right now, guys. Yeah, it's bad. And it was, we just got like hella rain for the past, what, two weeks? Yeah. So it's bad. You might hear frogs. And if you don't, it's all thanks to our professional editors. <clears throat> and yeah. So before we start, let's get, uh, let's hear from our sponsors. All right. So we don't have sponsors. So <laughs> sadly. I was like, okay. No. So. Opening up mosh pits, causing a rage to 500 plus people, over 300K plays on SoundCloud. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like everything I wanted to do when I was like young, when I was like 19, 17 is like what I'm doing now. But it happened so fast that it was just like, wow, I used to want this so bad and now I have it. But it was not like intentional like it just happened to happen so you didn't really grasp the moment it happened now i'm just seeing like the fruits of my labor pretty much i'm just like damn like people are really listening or showing up and paying attention which was not necessarily the intention behind it so it's just more so like appreciating and being grateful that all these people are like tuning in and you know coming to shows and stuff like that for sure interesting um so you recently turned 23 Yes, I did. And you have, I want to say you have a huge success. There's a lot of people just showing out when they hear the name Five Star Mono. They see it on that flyer. They're just like, we're pulling up. I've seen the lines and it's insane. Yeah, it is. It's really crazy. Like, I don't know. I really appreciate the younger kids that are like pushing and appreciating the new music. And like also people who are going out and understanding that like, Hosting DJs is a art for within itself. Everybody provides their own thing, whether it's like a genre or their own original like tracks, everybody is different. So it's like a showcase. And the fact that all these kids are like watching and paying attention and wanting to come see all these things, I'm like, wow, like we're really back. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's kids popping out and going crazy for these things, which is like, I'm very appreciative of that for sure. A hundred percent. And most of these shows are usually, I don't want to say most, but I've heard about you deep down south. Mm -hmm. uh, you were on the flyer. I want to say it was around winter time. I'm not sure. W winter, fall time. Was it the Halloween one that you did? I honestly can't tell you because I did so many shows for them for like a year and a half for two years. Okay. So I know... Uh, when I started DJing for them, that was like 2021. That was my first time ever like being on a stage ever. They like put me on their stage. I had never DJed for a crowd before, more than two people. I just took a leap of faith and I was like, you know what? Like, this is my opportunity to just like show. And I was barely, I want to say like 20 years old. And they were very young. They were like fresh out of high school at the time. So this was a while back 2021 uh and then all of 2022 i want to say i was djing for them as well um and then i think it was 2022 halloween that was like my one year anniversary with them so maybe that's when you saw me uh not sure which venue it was it but was um I'm not sure what venue it was 
But it was it was a Halloween one that I, I think I did see you. I saw the name on the flyer and I was like, okay, cool. I called her money up and I was like, hey, I'm not waiting in this line. Yeah. <laughs> Put me in. And he yeah. was like, I got you. Yeah. And then I think after that, uh, yeah, that was it pretty much. 20, the end of 2021, all of 2022, and then like the beginning half of 2023. And I think that was the last time I DJed for them. Nice. And you've done other shows. Like uh, I got a... I think the rollout for this was kind of smart, kind of cool. Um, I got a random flyer. We got a random flyer in House of Saints, and it was something called Shangri-La. Mm. And we were just like, who the fuck is this? We don't know who this is. And we opened it up, and it was like a, and it was a flyer, and mm-hmm. it said, to House of Saints. Mm-hmm. And we're like, who, who are these people? We don't know. So... For them to make a fly, I'm assuming, because personally, I feel like we're nobodies. We're just like, whatever, you know? But for someone to make a flyer with your ad on it, imagine how many flyers were made. Yeah. Personalized flyers, you know? So when we heard about it, I was like, okay, cool. I was I didn't invite no one. I was like, well, I'm going to go myself. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> and then I saw the instructions that was like, you want to pull it to this parking lot? Some dude's going to come and get you and walk you. And I was like, what the fuck? So on my way over there, I'm, I'm looking at the stories and it says that it got um it got shut down. Yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, there's no point in going back. So went back home, called it a night. But then I saw you guys moved on somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So with underground shows being shut down, I would say most of the time, not all the times. How does that affect you being that you got booked? I'm pretty sure there's money involved mm-hmm. most of the time. I'm hoping you get paid for it. Um, how does that affect you? This is like, oh, um, this wasn't a part of the agreement or like, oh, I'll meet y'all wherever y'all go. Yeah. Well, I have like, I think that everybody that books me has like a sort of respect towards my time and then also what they did book me for. So, uh, I don't try to take it personal or like in a way where it's like, oh, you're making me go out my way. Like if it's canceled, I never feel like it's like that or take it personal. So, uh, that show specifically was actually at like some warehouse uh with like at like some chemical plant Jesus. it was a rave um but not even 10 minutes after being there it got raided so we had to leave um and then i wasn't able to go to the next location because they had said, oh, we finally got somewhere to move it like 15 minutes after I had already left. And I was already heading back home. So I was like, hey, like I already left. I'm sorry. They said not your fault. Like you, you know, you had nothing to do with it getting canceled. We're going to send you your money. I was like, OK, like that's not a problem. They did end up paying me for the full hour I would have been DJing, even though I only did it for like maybe 20 minutes. But like out of the respect that people had, we just, you know, it was more so like, hey, like, I'm sorry, like, I already left. Uh, but also, like, you know, it's not your guys' fault. So I'm not really going to, you know, be rude about it. Um, but, yeah, they were really nice. And I would like to say that, like, that goes a long way to, like, respect with the people who are booking you or, like, the performer, like, goes such a long way because I can do stuff to go out of my way to, like, help you guys if you guys did something to help me, you know? So, like, it goes a long way. They understood that it wasn't necessarily, like, you know, I try to leave and pull off and just do this and that. They knew I had already left because they were trying to find an address between that time gap because so many people had showed up already. So, I think it was just that. And then um, that really applies to anybody. Like, the respect goes a long way. So, if somebody were to just tell me, like, hey, we're, like, even if it was, like, a day before, you know, I'd just be like, okay, cool, no problem, like, you know, I'll rearrange, or five hours before, an hour before, as long as they let me know, that's not a problem, Um, and then in that case, like I said, I had already left, so it wasn't necessarily something that was, like, yeah, yeah, but But they were, they're really nice about it, and they did pay me for that, so, yeah, shout out to them. Didn't the second place get rated, too? Uh, I don't know because I didn't really go to the second place. Uh, it was actually me and my friend Nino that got booked. He's another DJ in Houston as well. We both got booked for that show. So we were there together and he was supposed to go on after me, but because I was driving, he also left, but I believe they also paid him as well. 
just because like you know it wasn't necessarily our fault or yeah. theirs so they still wanted to honor like what they told us for that day which is like highly respectable for sure 100 percent, of course you know it's all about money yeah sadly enough it, yeah it's definitely about that and also the respect because i mean i've definitely gone out of like what i usually charge for people's budget if i see that they're being respectful and they have like a vision for it so it has a lot more to do with the respect for me with the money like i don't care how much money is offered for me respect is first so like I don't know. There's just been very, very, very many instances where I've just had to really like see how somebody is corresponding to the things that are being said, whether it's me saying that to them or they say something to me like respect to me is first. I don't care if it's like two hundred dollars for 30 minutes. Like, I, you know, I would rather never have to work with you again or offer you my services than take your money and feel disrespected sitting in the same seat that you're paying me to be in. Yeah. OK. That's, I feel like those are, that's a great way to kind of. Yeah, yeah, I'm by, very you know? heavy on respect, really, really big on respect. Like, it just depends. Um, I haven't had, I know I said many, many instances, but I haven't had many terrible situations. I would just say that, like, everybody who has reached out to me comes to me with respect first. And, like, that's what I look for in people that are trying to book me. You know, if you just say, yo, in my DM and expect me to just respond and it's like you're not representing yourself right now you this know what i mean is, did this happen to you recently um with well with the word yo not recently i had somebody that did like last october uh it was like a festival which is crazy so it means it was like a festival they like dm me and they were like yo but i didn't respond because i didn't see it for like two weeks because it was in my dm request but after I saw that, I was like, wait, I would have responded to this anyway, because yeah. it's in my DM requests, one. And two, I'm not responding to just a yo, like, you know. But yeah, no, it hasn't happened as of recently. Everybody has uh, approached me like, hello, this is what I do. I'm interested in booking you for your services. So everything's been good. I haven't okay. had any issues in like a good minute. Okay, no, that's good. Yeah, you know? it is. So it is good. You want to book her? Don't be disrespectful. Exactly. Come correct. So to whoever wants to book you, future, you know, uh, fucking bar mitzvah, kid's birthday party or whatever, how much do you charge? So right now my current rate is one twenty five the hour. Um, that's like my flat rate. Write that down. Write if that down. people want to do like multiple hours, I will definitely uh, consider that as a bundle deal. So like, you know, if somebody says, hey, instead of doing an hour, I want to do two hours. I'll be like, OK, well, I'll give you this rate, like not just 125, 125, 125. Uh, but it just depends. Uh, but for sure, my flat rate is 125 the hour. Anything less than that, I would do just 100. Hmm. Well, you wrote that down? OK, thank you. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's actually, that's actually a pretty nice price. I, yeah. I don't know why. I'm not really big into like the whole underground DJ stuff. I expect like 300 bucks an hour. No, but, uh, that's crazy. I've only ever charged that much when I uh, go out of Houston. Okay. So when I've been booked out of Houston, usually like my beginning rate is 300 because I have to accommodate for stay and travel and however long I'll be out there. So usually that includes like my travel expenses. Yeah, smart makes sense. Three hundred. Three hundred bucks. No, the, the, the oh, flat rate. Yeah, one twenty-five. I don't know. I was kidding. But okay, <laughs> it's all in here. All right. Okay. So you're from Memphis. Yeah, I am. You're a Memphis girl at heart. Yes. Houston can't change that for you. No. That's what it is. Oh well. When did you move to Houston? I moved to Houston in 2021 in like August or September, and I've been here since. Any specific reason why? Yes and no, but I want to say yes. Um, mostly because when I was in Memphis, like I did a lot of underground uh, mixing, a lot of like really, really underground artists. And at the time, uh, there wasn't really like a space for that type of music because you have to think this is like, I started DJing in 2019. So in 2019, I was 18 years old. And then uh, I finally officially started like taking it serious in 2020. So at the time, like underground was still very, very small. Like 
I remember uh, BK the Ruler wasn't even known. And a lot of people know who BK the Ruler is now. But, like, she was just starting off Destroy Lonely. Like, all these people were very, very small subdivision of SoundCloud. So, like, for me to play that in a place that listens to, like, Money Bag Yo or Young Dolph or Eda Lee Choppa or, like, music like that wasn't really a place for it. It was more so, like, I'm stuck in my room and the internet is all I have. This is the only place I could showcase, like, my mixes and my music and stuff like that because my local area doesn't necessarily, like, understand it yet. So, uh that was like a thought I had from the beginning. And then throughout those like months and years, I would travel a lot. So I was traveling a lot uh, from like LA to Atlanta or like Miami. And I would think to myself like, wow, these places do appreciate like the stuff that is not being appreciated over there. And people know what I'm actually talking about when I'm out of town. So I started like thinking to myself, where do I want to go? Because I know it's not here. I don't want to stay here for the rest of my life. Like I already see that there's not much to it. So I don't know. I really started thinking about where I wanted to go. And I was going to go to L.A. originally. But I was like, hey, it's a little too expensive. It's a little too expensive. And I don't want to spend my 20s like stressing about bills and money and stuff like that. So I was like, where's the second biggest place I could go? And I've been to Houston multiple times. So I was like, let me just go to Houston and see. And I had already followed a couple of people from the scene at the time, which was like 2020, 2019, 2018 for years so i was like okay houston has like a proper scene like they have the foundation laid everybody just gets to showcase their stuff and their talent and that just makes the whole collective like of houston uh houston uh what is it called it's at the tip of my tongue creatives so i was just like okay like i'll go to houston and i ended up coming here which i love like houston you can really go anywhere realistically it's just like my staying ground right now yeah but i could go wherever i'm not really like feel like i'm stuck here because before that i was in memphis for my whole life pretty much so yeah i liked houston and i settled here and yeah i don't know how much longer i'll be here but i do like it okay so glad you like houston yes Pretty sure everybody who heard is probably like, wait, so you might leave. So let's not think about the negative. <laughs> but we're going to take a quick break. And coming back, we're going to talk about collectives and dark side worldwide. Okay. So. So we are back from break. Speaking about collectives in Houston, Dark Side Worldwide. What is that? So Dark Side Worldwide was made by Melendez, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people in Houston are familiar with. Um, he curated this collective of a bunch of DJs that are some of my personal favorites in Houston. And then we also have Ash Cash in Dallas. Uh, but he is trying to showcase us individually because he's taking the time out to do his research on us and listen to how we mix and he wants to just elevate us to that like next level um especially because he does have a lot of opportunities presented his way so he wanted us to also just take advantage of the resources we have within each other kind of learn off of each other um learn off of him and just like things that we can do together because i feel like capitalizing together is stronger as a team but everybody individually has their own thing going on for sure um and i really really like the way he set that team up because everybody is so self-secure in their identity and like confident in their mixing which i love like i love people who are confident in what they're doing and it shows when you're listening to it um so I, I really like the people that he picked and that he's trying to create a team to elevate. Like, that's really special, especially in Houston. He was trying to really elevate people from his hometown. And I know I'm not necessarily from here, guys, but I've been here for a while. Um, and he and I personally have done other events like where he, you know, reaches out to me and is like, I want you to be a part of this event. Um, so he's heard me mix for a while now and he really likes the way that I do 
like, and carry myself and do all these things. So he really wanted to help me out, you know, by extending that invitation to the collective. Nice. I, I think that's a very important thing here in Houston. A lot of people, believe it or not, they just like to kick everyone to the ground and fuck you. I'm doing this. I'm doing yeah. that. Clothing brands. Uh, a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and to see someone... And I do know Melendez. I, I know who he is. Um, we haven't had a conversation like personally, but I've heard of him. I know he's from uh, Blade. So I know some of the guys there. So I've heard about him. So I'm glad that there's someone out there doing something like that for the scene. You're yeah. The scene that you're in, you know? Yeah. Um, awesome. That's great. You're Hispanic. Yes, I am. Okay. Where from? Uh, Tamaulipas. What part? So uh, it's called San Germán, Tamaulipas. Oh, I'm from San Fernando, Tamaulipas. Okay, okay. Nice. So that's yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, I actually was just there this weekend, so I was there all weekend. I go pretty often, um, at least once a year, but if not, I'll go like every other couple of months. But yeah, uh, I my whole family is from Mexico. I was born in Minnesota. That's a freaking fun fact. Nobody wow. knows that uh born in minnesota and then when i was like two or three i was moved to memphis with my whole family and i basically was there since since i was 20 and then i left and came to houston so your people are um straight blood from over there right? yeah exactly so i'm assuming you grew up in the spanish household yes i did so spanish music all of that's going on yeah your first english artist was Nicki minaj oh my gosh um, yeah, fourth yeah. grade year. Yeah. Open up to a bunch of opportunities. <laughs> yeah, how did Drake you know that? was the next one, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, how was that? Like, okay, so Mexican parents, they hear you, you know, listening to English music and they're like, what the fuck are you listening to? Yeah. Put on some fucking whoever the fuck, you know, <laughs> yeah. Tires del Norte or whoever it is that they're listening to. So... Were your parents telling you anything about you listening to Nicki Minaj, Drake, etc.? No, my parents are the complete opposite, actually. Uh, my mom, she is bilingual, so she speaks English and Spanish. She also grew up listening to some English music. Um, and then my dad, he doesn't speak any English at all. So, like, he was never really like, oh, turn that off. Like, he was never like that. He just kind of let me, like, do my thing. Um, and then my mom, she... Pretty much like everything I liked or did, she supported me behind that no matter what it was. So for me, it was always like Spanish music growing up. And then when we got a computer and a Wii, um, I started looking through the web browser on YouTube and I found like Nicki Minaj, Justin Bieber, Michael Jackson. And I was like, whoa, like, whoa, I didn't know this music existed. Um, and then also elementary school, I was like the only Mexican girl in my whole school. Um, I grew around, I grew up around a lot of black people. So for me, this was like stuff I heard, never got to experiences, but like all of my best friends at the time, they would play it and I would like love it. And I would just be like, wow, like I'm missing out. Like, you know, I'm listening to all this, all this Spanish music at home and like, you know, I only heard it if I was like at a pep rally at school or like a school dance or something like that until I got my first computer or first Wii when I was actually able to like go through all of that stuff. But yeah, like my parents were always supportive. My mom, she was like super supportive during my Justin Bieber phase, which is crazy. But she was so supportive, like bought me tickets. That was like one of my first concerts ever. You're a believer. Oh, yeah. How did it make you feel that he's having a kid now? You know what? That should be me, but you know, it's cool. Um, I saw it coming, low key. So I was like, you know what? He deserves this. Like, he's out the limelight. He deserves to have what he's always wanted, which is a normal life. You know who had it first, who, who said it first? Orozco posed that way. Really? They said that Justin Bieber was gonna have a baby. Some shit like that, but it wasn't recent. It was like a while back. Well. There's been rumors, like the reason why it wasn't such a shock to me was because there's been rumors since last year in December that she was pregnant. And like, I had seen something about it. So when it was announced, it was more so like, oh, the rumors were true. Do you know what Oscar was doing? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Mexicans, bro. Um, no, well, how do I know that? We contacted somebody. Oh, wow. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, you're a vivid dreamer. 
Oh yeah. You be dreamy shit. Yeah. Um famous words never leave your stuff unattended. ASAP Rocky. Yeah. What did they steal from you? Nothing. It was actually a dream, but it like taught me such a valuable lesson because I was so like nice with everybody that I'd be like, yeah, you could borrow my mixer. Yeah, you could borrow my laptop stand. Like that was a dream that I had. I had a dream that I was like at some school jamboree thing with like an ASAP Rocky was there, but then like somebody stole my stuff and I was trying to show them my music and it was like, I was like, holy fuck, like I have nothing to show them. Like I have nothing to show. So after that, I was like, wait, like I have to be more careful. People have their drinks out. People have all this stuff out. Somebody could easily swipe any of my equipment. And like considering that a lot of people like are learning how to DJ or want to learn how to DJ, like I could be an easy lick, you yeah. know, like so I was just like, OK, I need to start being more mindful of where I keep all my stuff because I don't want anybody to try to take my stuff. So it's that rocking. Yeah. So I was just like, after that, I was like, dude, like maybe this is a sign. I need to not just be so nice. Cause there were times where I've literally let people like I'll be done DJing for my hour. I usually leave depending on the event. But there's been times where somebody's like, oh, my equipment isn't working. Like I can't hear in the speakers. Can I borrow yours? And I'll stay for like on a whole nother hour and a half, whole nother two hours. And I would just kind of wander off because I'd be like, well, I don't want to just stay up here. I'll like be back and check on it. But I don't know. After that, I was like, dude, like I can't just be leaving my stuff anywhere or, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I just would rather not. Yeah. But I'd rather be safe about it. But yeah, that was like a fear of mine after that dream. I was like, mm. OK, so that's good. Don't don't do that because we're paying the price. We let somebody borrow some equipment oh. and no word from them. Yep. Yeah. That's how it happens. You we can't be too we, nice sometimes. We won't put their, their name out there yet. <laughs> yet. He said pay up. <laughs> but by, by next week, I'll be nice. I'm still being fucking nice about it. Um, One quick thing. So I want, I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. And I want you to tell me what it means to you okay all right so oh my gosh <laughs> oh my gosh webkins okay so i used to love webkins and considering the fact that like this is also the same era when i had just got a computer like i was i was on all of this stuff i used to go to walgreens with my parents because we used to have one across the street and I used to see the little plushies with the tags and that was like my childhood. I would literally go on Webkins, register a brand new, you know, little character. I would play with them. I would name them after my elementary school friends. And like, I would go home and just be on the computer for hours playing Webkins. Did you name any of them to like a little crush that you had? In no, they were all girlfriends. Okay. I remember the first webkin I had was a little cow, and I named her Christy for a friend that I had in school. Mm. That was my first webkin. Well, this is for you to keep. Thank you. Please take it home. Frame it. Oh, cool. also, I would like to say I made a webkins tweet, and webkins liked it and commented. So, yeah. That's a flex. Yeah, it is. They know who I am. So, five star Mona. Yes. You've DJed. Give me an estimate. How many times? Oof. Oh, my gosh. Over the last couple of years, since 2021, I want to say, like, at least maybe we're nearing up, like, I want to say at least 100 flat. Any bad experiences? Definitely a couple, but. Top one. Top one bad experience while DJing? Yeah. Mm. Or after. Or before. Yeah. I mean, I want to say most of the issues I've had have been with, like, probably the people throwing the events rather than the actual event itself. But I would say one of the most recent times is that uh, I'm very picky with who I have on stage with me um, because, one, I'm not friendly with just anybody. Sorry. Like, you might 
you know, know who I am. But if I don't know you, I don't feel comfortable. So I'm very picky with who I have on stage with me. Um, and I was DJing this one event. I hadn't DJed rap music in a while, which I have stepped away from for a little bit. Uh, so for me, this was a big deal because I'm coming back to like another rap set. Um, and I was on stage and everything was going good. Everything was going fine. But then during the peak of my set, uh, right when I was about to play like the first song that goes into like all of my crazy ass, like mosh pit songs, some girls were on stage and they started like twerking and dancing all on the table and like were shaking it and it disconnected my mixer from their stuff and like all of the music just went out and it was like dead silent and I was like oh my gosh because it's going into the one song I needed to start off everything and the crowd was just starting to like get comfortable so it took us about 10 minutes to bring the music back. It was like 10 minutes of silence. Everybody had walked off and started doing their own thing. And I'm just like, I only have about 20 minutes left of my set. And this is the best part, like out of the whole, you know, time I've been DJing. So it kind of sucked because it like ruined the experience that I wanted to provide. That's like the biggest thing for me. I want to provide an experience. And like that immediately like killed the exact experience I was trying to provide. So I don't know that show. I was just like, wow, like this is why I hate having people on stage. Yeah. And I mean, after that, the show continued, but I wasn't able to really like at what cost. Yeah. I wasn't able to prioritize on the exact part I wanted to prioritize yeah. on for sure. So it was terrible. What, what yeah. could have fixed it? Uh, not having random people on stage. For well, sure. Afterwards. Um, it happened you can't oh, yeah. do much about it i guess what would have fixed it would have been like having more people back to just jump start exactly where we left off because between those 10 minutes everybody kind of separated so it was like dead like nobody was like you know what i mean it was just like everybody was standing waiting for it to pick back up because we had so many people on stage trying to fix it and fix the speakers and connect everything so it was just like this big ball of people on stage and everybody's on the crowd just like standing like awkward yeah so that would have fixed it uh, not a not a 10 piece honey gold fries nope nope really? i was like if you guys would have just came back and turned up and just picked up where you left off everything would have been just fine okay well it happens yeah can't do much about it yeah but if you ever go to a five-star mona show fuck off the stage <laughs> So you should get like bracelets and be like, yeah, if you have a bracelet. There was actually the a security stage. guard that like you couldn't access the stage unless you had access like by the security guard. But uh, the girls were brought on, I think, by one of the party promoters or something like that. So he gave them the access through the security yeah. because before that I only had my people on stage. Uh, after that happened and I asked them to kick everybody off stage that they kicked off my guests as well. So for me, that also was like, whoa, like these are people, mind you, some of the people that I brought had never been to one of my shows before. This was me extending an invitation as in like, come see what it's like. And they got kicked off stage. So I felt really bad for my guests. And then also it was just like a mess. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. Like we'll run it back another time. I said that to my guests because, yeah. you know, and yeah, it was it was crazy. I was like, okay, I'm ready to get off the stage right now. Damn. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Honestly. Um, well, hopefully that never happens again. Yeah. If it for does. Sure. I mean, I'm very strict. I'm very strict. Yeah. Like, But for good reasons. Yeah, good exactly. Reasons. Exactly. I mean, you know, nobody wants their equipment snatched. That could have messed up it my computer. For yes. sure. I mean, anything, you know, like nobody wants to deal with those problems, especially when they're like in their zone. Like you can ask my friends, whenever I'm DJing, I don't look at anybody. Like don't turn around and talk to them. I am focused on what I'm doing. So like the last thing I need is people around me doing all these things and I'm trying so hard to like do my thing. I heard somebody styled her. Who styled her? It was me, Lauren, and, and me, Simone. So why this look? We tried to let go for something she already does, so it was kind of like a Y2K kind of thing. Yeah, we just wanted to do something that like resembled her. She wanted to go as Mona today, so we 
put Mona together. Glamorize, glamorize Mona. Okay, <laughs> Mona. So she wanted to be Mona today. Does she have different personalities, different uh, aliases? How does that work? Is there like some she's personality? Like, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Very much herself, like just very authentic. Like I don't think she has a different personality. She's just, she's just her. Mm-hmm. Okay. For a minute, I thought you were playing like different characters. Yeah. Well, it's because like I'm very strict about like people not knowing my name. So if I tell you my name, it's because it's like on a personal level that I want to have a friendship with you. But if it's just like surface level, then you just know me as Mona. Mona. Like you know. But yeah, like I've always been the same. It just depends on what level I show myself to you, whether it's on a personal level or just like the surface level. Yeah, which works same way here. I mean, I introduced myself as saying, but I think we've had this conversation. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's did. not my real name. Yeah, you know? but that's just how it is, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and then the whole Mona thing. Um, I know people say or think it's like a name, but. Um, Mona is like Mona, so like Spanish. Yeah, Mona. so um, I don't know. A couple people have heard my tag, and if you have my mixes on SoundCloud, you know that my tag uh, usually says "Real Mona Five Star Doll Shit." So real doll, five star doll shit, and yeah, if you know, you know. So why five star Mona? No specific reason. Um, I didn't necessarily have a name in mind because I did go by Demon and Dior a long time ago. That was like when I was 18, 17, 19. Uh, but after a while, I was like, everybody was calling me Dior and I didn't really like that. I was like, mm, this is not like fitting. I really don't like that. So I tried to go for something that was more casual. And I know that Mona could pass off as a name as well. But I also wanted to integrate something in Spanish just because, uh, like, if you know, you know, you know what I mean? Like, Mona, like, you get it. Like, you know, a little Latina girl. But, yeah, I wanted to go off of something that would also be more on the normal side and casual. So it didn't always sound like a stage name. Okay, well, I know, for, like, I know you don't want to stay in Houston forever. So where do you plan to DJ next? Like, what's the move? Um, I want to say that when I move, I don't necessarily think about the DJing opportunities. I more so think about my way of living and like, am I going to enjoy the environment? Because like the DJing thing for me, I can turn it on and turn it off whenever I want. My real life is still like very much present. So I would definitely want to go to California, like I said, just because there's the mountains, you can hike, there's the city, there's the beach, like you could literally go to all three in one day if you really wanted to. So I love like nature, but I also love the city. And I just feel like it's perfect, like balance, like everything I would want is there. Whether it's going on a hike, going to the beach on a Sunday, going to the city a Friday night, like I could do either or. Anything else? Anybody? I, I have a question. So, what's like your routine before you DJ? Like, do you meditate or like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so before I DJ, I'm like damn near throwing up. Um, always fucking scared, terrified. As of recently, I haven't been feeling that way. I've been feeling more excited than like scared just because I've gotten so much more confident in my music and my mixing. So like I haven't been feeling as scared. Ex- like I'm more so excited to present. Like I'm so ready to go on and show people what I'm like having with me. But like I would say on a day to day basis, if I'm just like DJing, I'll more than likely run through my set list um, just to make sure that I have enough music. I'll download all my music. I'll be getting ready. Um, And then leading up to the event, I usually feel like I'm going to throw up or like I'm going to fucking pass out. So I'll drink a ginger ale and I'll be like, please save me right now. Like, please save me. Like, I know you got me right now. Please. I'll drink it on the way there. I'll take it in with me if I have to, even if it's like a droplet. Like, I swear, just save me. So I'll like feel pretty fine once I'm there. I'll be like, okay, like I'm here. I just got to get it out the way and I know I can do this. And I've run this like three to five times. I know I got this. It's just the nerves of like knowing that I'm about to like pretty much perform for people. Like I hate to think of it that way. Like I hate that it's like a performance for people because I would rather it be more so like the music to the party for the people and they like 
enjoy it within themselves rather than it being a performance where I have to like present myself to people but like that's what it is so I just I'm like okay like I'm about to go on stage but it's been getting easier for sure like recently I've been very excited I'll be like wow like I can't wait for them to hear this like I have some great music like I know exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just now looking forward to people's reactions while they're actively listening to like the mixing that I'm doing or what song I'm gonna play or what sample is in this beat like I can't wait to see their reaction I guess we're kind of we're pretty much you know at the end part of the whole interview thing or the whole show um I will say you've been a great guest. Thanks, I think guys. You, you definitely are a great yapper. Thank you. Do you do have you know good conversation skills. Yeah, you didn't see nothing, but yes, trust yes. me, I could go on for forever. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you, and I like to say that uh, sometimes we have part twos. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess we could take we'll take this as the introduction for Mona. You know, people get to know you a little bit, like yeah, the, the for sure. Is, I feel like. Uh, because I don't know a lot of people in Houston, I like to think that I do, but like every time I go out, I meet somebody new. I kind of want people to know like, oh, this is somebody I could be comfortable around with because I don't know, the way people carry themselves sometimes is very egotistical and just ugly and mean-spirited and I hate that and I hate that like, these are the people who are your like performers or like your entertainers like I don't know I feel like I should have people who are comfortable enough to say hey I really need some water hey I really feel uncomfortable over there like I want people to be comfortable doing that for sure especially now that like majority of my crowd has been a lot of girls um it's like such a big transition because I'm so used to just like, I was used to DJing for boys and these mosh pits and they don't give a fuck who's on stage. They're not listening or they just want to jump up and down. They're not caring about the transitions. They're not caring about who's on stage. They just want to jump up and down and dance. It's so different now shifting to like a whole girl crowd because now like the girls are surrounding the booth. They're offering me everything you could think of. They're, uh, you know, making sure I'm okay. And I'm like, wow, like I do this for you guys. Like I always tell people I DJ for the girls, the gays and the days. Like I have to make sure that the people that are taking care of me are taken care of. And I'm also providing them a space to like have fun I always think about it that way like a lot of these parties or events are catered to the guys or the you know a lot of the majority of the crowd is guys it's catered to a lot of those people I want to be able to like provide a space for the girls and like they have the music they want to listen to without you know having to worry about a mosh pit <laughs> erupting in the middle of them and getting shoved and pushed out the way like I want to be able to just provide a space for girls no matter what like love the guys that do turn up to my music though for sure like there's that's without a doubt but i really prioritize the girls and the women that are there because like a lot of the times there wasn't a space for them so as long as i can create that then like that's more than enough realistically because i didn't come into this with an expectation like like i said everything is a fruit of my labor everything that's happening is happening because of the stuff that i've chose to do in the past so it's not necessarily like i'm actively seeking these things, they just happen, and that's like a fruit of my labor. All of the work that I've put in has created this now. So if I'm able to create something for the girls and see like what areas like you know need more music or whatever, I can provide that. Why not? And we love to hear it. That's great shit, honestly. Thank you. Cause I am one of those guys. Well, back then I used to go on like, oh yeah, fucking jump like a fucking dumbass. Like, oh, let's go. I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. But now I think I appreciate more, like, transitions. I am the type of, like, oh, fuck. Um, they're using this because of this amp or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm very, like, deep into, like, music that's like that. That's good. That's good. Because, I mean, yeah. that's realistically who we perform for. Like, the people who are just jumping up and down, like, they're not listening to what is being played or what is being introduced or sampled or mixed in. Like... They just want to dance to the songs they're familiar with. So, like, the crowd that I've been to, gravitating towards to now, 
is so much more appreciative of that and like I just love it because that's what I want to do I want to be able to show people how I actually mix the music if you're listening to that then you get to understand like my level of mixing what I'm doing like yeah people who appreciate the music yeah hey man keep it up honestly you're doing great from what I've seen thank you I hope to see you in a different show yeah Speaking, for sure oh, when is your next show so I have a couple of coming up uh I know for sure confirmed I believe let me check my calendar so I believe the next show that I have confirmed is June 7th um and then I have two more pending for the month of June so that would be three for the month of June um I know for sure the 7th though and then maybe some more in the summer like July um I don't know. I'm just kind of going off of what's presented to me. Yeah. Okay. So you heard it, June seventh. I might have to go to that one. I we're coming. I'm coming back from Seattle, June fourth. So it just seems right. Like I just came back from Seattle. Yeah. I have to go to a show. Yeah. So June seventh. Yeah. I'll DM you. Send me the details and everything. Yes. Um, June seventh will yeah. be with Fever Dream USA. If you guys want to look them up, I will be DJing there on the seventh. What are you playing? Um, I think I'm going to do a variety of a sound that I've been kind of curating. Um, I've been calling it my sexy club music for those who have been paying attention. Like I said, I do it for the girls. Like, let's get into the club. Let's get drunk. Let's get sexy, like flashing lights. You're touching all over your body. You're dancing. Um, a lot of, I want to say a mix of everything has some hard groove, has some Brazilian funk, some uh latino techno has a little bit of everything i just kind of see what's like bouncing all of my music i pick off of what i like so i could just say it's a compilation of all my favorite songs realistically so that means we just got you got to be there yeah, i'll be there exactly, for sure exactly i will i will be there yeah and i, I do want to say my music is for everybody it's not just for the girls for sure but I try to cater to them, you know, because I just feel like it's right. It feels right for me. Yeah. Uh, but it's a mix of everything. If you just love to dance and, like, let loose, like, that is where you need to be, for sure. Like, any of my sets, I do it for the people who want to dance and get loose and they don't care. They just dance freely and feel comfortable. That is what I'm here for. Well, you guys better be there. If you're not, you're fake. No, <laughs> it's understandable. I'm pretty sure it's understandable. Um... Last question. To the girls who see you and they see you as inspiration. Because mm -hmm. DJing, I don't want to say that it's a man's game. Yeah. But it's, majorly, it's a bunch of men. Yeah, it is. So, to the girls who want to DJ or see you and they're like, man, I want to do that shit. What do you have to say to them? I would say don't feel confined to doing a certain genre. Um, don't ever limit yourself to what you want to play. Because even though... It's not everybody's cup of tea. It's what you want to put out as a representation of yourself. And that's what people look for. How do you represent yourself? When people go out and listen to different DJs, they're listening to what every DJ provides to the ambiance. So don't feel limited to just do one certain thing. Play what you want to play because that is what you're representing yourself as. Uh, two, don't feel intimidated. Uh, this could also just be a personal thing. I am very like headstrong and like I am very confident and I don't feel like anybody could make me feel any less. Uh, so it's like you have to really stand on your shit. You can't let anybody try to belittle you or try to undercut you or, you know, do things that are out of convenience for you because you have to stand your ground. That's the only way that you're going to like allow yourself to progress past those type of things um because there is a lot of that for sure especially like you said it's very male dominated so a lot of these guys are going to try to tell you like oh we'll put you on first and we'll only give you this much oh can we pay you in five days and it's like you wouldn't do that to the other dj on the lineup because they're a guy you're going to actually pay them either the deposit or pay them before they even walk in the venue so you just have to like really be headstrong, be very on top of your business shit. Uh, don't let people try to intimidate you and don't let them inconvenience you because there's a fee. So don't ever let anybody try to tell you what you can and cannot do when there was an agreement put in place. Um, I would say that 
it's not always necessary, but if you can, try to have some type of agreement in place in paper. Just because, like I said, some people will try to do stuff to, like, you know, uh, throw you whatever, however much, and then not, you know, do whatever they said they were going to do. Try to have some type of written agreement, make it legally binding, and just make sure that is set in place prior. Whether it's, you know, having a deposit requirement or being paid before you come in or being paid the day after, whatever your rules are, make sure you have that documented. Make sure they sign off on that. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the biggest thing is just don't be intimidated. Don't hold yourself back and don't cut yourself short. Present yourself as loud as you want to. I feel like that's like, I'm always going to be myself no matter what. I don't care who is in the room. I don't care how many people are in the room. I'm always going to be myself, whether it's dancing by myself, <laughs> screaming and laughing really loud, doing so many thousand spins on the dance floor that's empty. I don't care. I'm going to have fun. Um, and that's really what it's all about. Those are the big, biggest things. I would say have fun. Don't let nobody intimidate you and be authentically like yourself for sure. It was great having you. Thank Honestly, you. I, um, I'm glad that you were the first guest, me coming back to this. Uh, I didn't think you were going to answer. I was like, I don't really? know if she's going to answer. I wow. was like, I don't know. Yeah, so. I'm always open to new opportunities. I also wanted to ask you, what made you want to interview me and what? like what was the leading thought to like hey let's have this person on an interview and this is how we're gonna go about it okay so whenever okay so basically there's like a little process to uh doing the whole guest booking and all of that mm -hmm. um i think me and his we kind of varied we're kind of different you basically book people that you knew right like you met them on the spot. You're like, hey, da, 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 da. Yeah, for me, I, I'm i always at a distance. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking at people and I'm like, that's cool, you know, cool. Like, I'll come back to that. Yeah. Whatever, you know. So in this case, for you, it was the Titan South. I was like, okay, that's fucking dope. I never had a DJ um, on the show. Mm -hmm. So I think it would, um, it would be great. And not just a DJ. We have our first DJ first female dj yeah i think that's a very big thing to have you know yeah comeback episode yeah comeback episode it's gotta be big yeah um so i guess i had you like on a list like for a while i was like wait five star mona five star mona and then i was going to hit you up last year mm -hmm. but then i made a decision to myself like you know what i think i want to take a break for a little bit so i that list i just put it to the side now why i wanted you here I think there's a lot of DJs in Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just what it is. It can be very competitive. Yeah. But your name stands out. Yeah. I think um, the name itself and just who you are as a person is kind of like you said, you know, uh, and how I said earlier, there's a bunch of dudes doing it. So your name stands out. Yours, um, DJ Ariel, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, top two, like, okay, like, I definitely need them on the show. Mm -hmm. And you play music that I like. Yeah. I love basically what you heard whenever you guys were here. Uh, mm -hmm. We were waiting for Javi. That's what I like to hear. And that's stuff that I've heard you play, you know, mm -hmm. like Crystal Castles to uh, Destroy Lonely, Gunna. It's a mixture. Mm -hmm. Those are three different artists. Um, I wouldn't compare gonna and destroy lonely yeah but you know but those are three completely different artists i think um it, it kind of goes back to what you said you know you play music that you like mm -hmm. i want to have guests that i actually admire their work and i like what they do yeah you know so i think that's why i wanted you here because it's like if i were to think if i were to ever throw an event who would i have as a dj and I think that kind of goes back to why I wanted him to write that down, even though he doesn't have to. Like, I, I'll <laughs> memorize it just to have an idea. But that question was really for me. Like, OK, yeah. cool. Not, you know, yeah. now I have an idea, uh, you know, base price and all that. Cool. You know, if, if I ever were to throw an event, I would want to book you. Yeah. So thank you. No, of course. You know, so I guess it just that's the case. You know, I like what you do. I like the work that you make. I like um, 
just the the vibe you know yeah. the whole everybody jumping around fucking yeah. whatever you know <laughs> yeah that's what it. it's all about it's all about people having fun and creating that atmosphere for them like we're really in charge of creating the atmosphere like the atmosphere so i always feel like i have to really like feel it out see what crowd is in front of me and then just kind of go based off of that for sure yeah oh well you definitely walk a path and you walk your own path and you walk it well yeah thank you so huge props to you again i'm glad that this is the first the comeback episode yeah i'm thank very you for excited having me. um this is five star mona thank you so much thank you and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this the show the episode and let us know what you think about her DJing skills. Everything's yes. going to be in the description. Yes, I do have a couple of mixes on SoundCloud, different genres. So if you're like into rap, electronic music, hardcore, whatever you want to listen to, it's definitely on there. Um, and then you never know. This summer, we could have something brewing for the girls uh, just to kind of create a safe space for them and see what's coming up this whole summer. And I bet. You guys are excited. So, top three links, mixes. I, I'm going to listen to them. I listen to like two of them. I'm going to listen to all of them or most of them. And I'm going to just pick my top three. Yes. They're going to be in the description. Check them out. Those are my personal favorites. Let us know what you guys think. Let us, <laughs> let us know what you guys like, what genre you guys are fucking with. Yeah, what let you want to hear more of. Exactly, what yeah. you want to hear more of. So, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good night.